I've got to kick off today by asking you for forgiveness. Please do not hate me. This is not a garden reveal video. The garden is not finished in any way, shape or form. We had all of last weekend cleared to do the garden and everything was looking great. And then we got the text that our kitchen was being delivered on Thursday, which is obviously super exciting, probably the most exciting part of this renovation so far. But what that meant was that the absolute chaos that was our interim kitchen needed to go somewhere. And uh, the garden was the only place that that could go. So this is currently what our garden looks like. So the old kitchen is currently in the garden. The new kitchen is currently being installed, which is super exciting and coming on video very, very soon. It basically means that we are going to be waiting a couple of weeks for a garden reveal. So I apologize because I know I promised at the end of last video it would be ready. But sometimes in renovations, things just don't work out the way you planned. And so I thought while we had all of the spare time and we weren't doing anything on the house, I could use this video to talk you through some more times that things just didn't go to plan. And also some times where things did go to plan or went even better than planned. So this week is our biggest mistakes and our biggest wins of the renovation so far. I'm sure there's going to be plenty more mistakes and plenty more wins between now where we currently are and when the house is completely done. But this is where we've got so far. And I'm hoping that you are interested in renovation, renovating the moment or one day hope to renovate. Watching this video will mean that you don't end up making the same mistakes that we did. So. Let's kick off with the things we got wrong. Okay, so the first one is not having our light switches in really obvious locations. So in both our bedroom and our dressing room, the light switches aren't where you would naturally put your hand as you come in, i.e. right next to the door. They're both around a little corner. Now obviously this isn't a massive deal because we live up here and also even if guests were staying up here or someone else was staying up here, you only have to learn where the light switch is once before it's no longer a problem, but I just think the fact that it's not in a sensible place. Now the reason we did it was to get a certain bathroom size without taking too much space out of the bedroom and because where the house naturally ended in the dressing room, there was always going to be a little bit of an indent. So it's not through plain stupidity. For some reason it's just always something that's grated on me. So that's what I would consider a bit of a mistake so far. Secondly, not screwing in the screws enough when plasterboarding the house. Why you ask? Well, because after you've plastered and painted, what will happen over time is that the metal of the screw will push the plaster out. And now we've basically got loads of these weird little circles with a nail in the middle throughout the house. Again, it's not a huge issue because we just have to fill it and then paint over it. But if anyone's ever done like a snag list, I think is the term, um, all of those little jobs that you have to do to finish up rooms at the end, you know it's the absolute worst part of a renovation. So if we had just screwed those screws in a little bit more and never had to do all of this, I'd be a lot happier. So I'm considering that one a mistake. Now this one, this is just like a true first time renovator mistake. And it's one that because we've made the mistake now, we will never ever make this mistake again. And basically when we did the plumbing for the shower, we didn't do the plumbing and look at the kind of knobs at the same time. So when we went to go attach the knobs afterwards, turning the shower to the right means that the actual uh, shower from the top is turning on. And turning it to the left means that the handheld bit is uh, spraying. But we installed the pipes the other way around. So now when you sensibly get into the shower and turn it towards the bit of the shower that very clearly tells you the uh, waterfall above is going to turn on, it'll turn the handheld thing on. And when you go to turn the handheld thing on, water will start spraying onto the top of you. This is also something that can't be fixed, as in we would need to untile the shower, take down the plasterboard and basically do it all again. We're obviously not going to do that. So we just have to remember to tell all of our guests before we use the shower to uh, aim for the opposite of what they're looking for, which is funny, annoying, and definitely a renovation mistake. The next one was not thinking enough about our lighting situation. So we basically just went lights in the top of the ceiling, obviously, 
uh, and all kind of lamps or bedside lights and all of that stuff we we didn't think about we didn't know where our beds were going to be placed we didn't think about any of that but as I very quickly discovered all of those wall lights that I love so much they're all designed, or most of them rather, are designed to be kind of chased into the wall so there's no wires. Not having wires coming out of them mean that they look a lot better and a lot more kind of integrated in the room. So not planning ahead and making sure that we had the wires in ahead of time was definitely a mistake. However, this one I don't regret quite as much because I know that we never would have been in the position where we had mapped out the rooms quite enough. I definitely think if we ever do another house, I would be able to do it, but for the first time, it's just not something we had enough knowledge or vision of beforehand. So I don't beat myself up over that one, uh, but if you do know the layouts of your rooms and you are thinking about wall lights, think about them while you're doing your electrics and before you put up your plasterboard and plaster and paint. I'll remember that one next time. Then probably the most serious or the biggest one of all of these is not having enough knowledge before we went into the renovation and for this i'm specifically talking about knowledge about lead paint and asbestos we definitely didn't understand the kind of danger of both of those things and even more importantly we didn't really understand where you would find asbestos or lead paint and how you should treat it if you think you'd found it a great example of this was lino underneath the carpets upstairs we were so excited about moving upstairs and starting to get our first bedroom ready and the bedroom being the bedroom that would mean we're able to move into the house that we kind of just got our heads down and attacked the room and as part of that we took the carpet out rolled up the carpet found lino underneath and then proceeded to break that lino up into many many small pieces that we then later found out through one of your very helpful comments is about the worst thing you can possibly do and so what we imagine we had done at some point is basically just let off a bunch of asbestos into the room. It's the same thing with lead paint as well. I spent a fair bit of time sanding down our um, staircase handles or spindles I should say and yeah realized as part of that uh, creating lead paint dust in the air probably also not a good idea. Now I don't fully know whether there was asbestos in the lino or lead paint on the spindles but given the age of our house and looking at some pictures of what the signs are and the color paints are you should be looking for you know i'm starting to lean towards the fact that it might well have had those two things in there now i don't know enough about how you should treat asbestos and lead paint so i'm not going to kind of give you all the information but if you are looking to buy an older house definitely educate yourself on where you would find it and the kind of materials you would find it in all i can say from my experience watch out for lino look for that kind of signature green lead paint color Try not to create dust. Get people in who know what they're talking about and can test for it. You can also buy asbestos test strips on Amazon to test yourself. Just take as many precautions as possible. And when you do come into contact with what you think might be asbestos or lead paint, don't break it up into millions of tiny pieces and don't sand it down. Those would be my, my top tips as a seasoned renovator. Another mistake and one we just should have known better is tradesmen. Um, make sure you check your references, make sure you trust who you're getting. We've had two tradesmen that we really uh, didn't get on with or weren't happy with the result and lo and behold those were the two tradesmen where we didn't ask for references, we didn't ask for pictures of evidence of what they've done, we just got a quote and we went with it. I'm not even going to spend too much time on this one because it was pure idiocy on our part. I will always check references and I'll always ask for evidence of past work in the future. Um, that was a lesson I think we deserve to learn. And then the final mistake or the thing I would do differently in the future is the fact that we didn't start with a clear out. We basically went room to room and only got rid of stuff as and when we needed. It wasn't the end of the world, but it certainly made for a much more kind of chaotic renovation experience. What it would mean is that we were removing old carpets from, you know, one floor of the house when we had got so far on another floor of the house that we no longer wanted dust to enter that area. So we basically just didn't plan ahead nearly enough. What I would do next time as a top tip would be I would get a shed. That's the first thing I would do. Put the shed up in the garden and then I would fully clear out the house. Carpets gone, 
old stuff gone, just everything that we are getting rid of, getting rid of a skip and saying goodbye forever, and then all kind of wood, metals that you think might be useful, or just stuff that does come in handy when renovating, spare floorboards, that sort of stuff, I would keep in the shed. So then your house becomes one kind of empty, bare bones, very organized space and you just take stuff from this shed as you need. What this does mean, of course, is that there's always the chance you're gonna find further down in the renovation that you've got rid of something that would have been useful or there is going to be an added expense because you've got rid of something that would have been useful, but I think it's a pretty fair exchange uh, for the peace of mind that you get of just living or renovating, working in a clean space. So yeah, those are our top renovation mistakes. I'm sure I've missed a few. And I'm sure we will make plenty more over the next few months as we finish up the house, but I hope that helped. Now, for the sake of balance, I would never just look at the bad without looking at the good. I'll not talk you through some of our best decisions or things that we would definitely do again. We started things off with our neighbors really, really well. So before we'd even moved in, or rather before we'd even gotten the keys, before we'd bought the house, but the offer was accepted and it was going through, we got friendly with the neighbors, we understood who was renting, um, so we'd need to speak to their landlords about doing anything to our house and who owned the house, so we would speak to themselves. Um, and more so just kind of getting on with your neighbors. I think that's obviously always a great tip and it was a good move on our part, but it definitely comes in handy and it's the smart thing to do if you know you're going to be doing work. So we kind of spoke them through what our ideas for the house were, how long we thought the work would take, the fact that we're doing it most of ourselves, so it's not like there would be builders nonstop all day, every day while you know they were working. Obviously this was during COVID, so a lot of people were working from home. So I think people might've been more sensitive to building during working hours hours than they would be if you know they were out at work every day being friendly with our neighbors you know on both sides but also the garden who we back onto and just being nice to people in the street in general made it a lot easier when there were bits of work that we wanted doing so we wanted to cut back a tree so that we were able to get a lot more light in our self-facing garden we wanted to paint two of our neighbors fences on our side we to do the loft conversion and all of that stuff we needed party wall agreements to remove the chimney breast we needed agreement from our neighbor so yeah just getting on with people being up front and letting them know your plans um, and exactly what you plan on doing how you plan on doing it it uh, just gives them all the more reason not to say no or to be happy with what you're getting up to so that pretty simple being nice it's not hard but uh it's definitely a top tip when it comes to neighbors now the next thing is just doing a loft conversion in general. So I'll link a video up here or here, wherever, that goes through every single cost involved in the loft conversion. It was super expensive. I mean, it was cheap as far as loft extensions go, but it's still a lot of money to spend. But now that we see what houses on our road that have done loft conversions or are four bedrooms go for versus houses that are two bedrooms, we know that we've more than made our money back. So I think in terms of kind of input versus output or effort versus reward, a loft extension is definitely just the best thing we did in terms of resale value but even more so just in terms of ourselves and our lives. When this house is done, we will have our bedroom, which is in the loft. We've got a dressing room. We're gonna have a study because we do predominantly work from home now. And we have a spare room for friends or family or you know anyone who's just coming up to London for a little bit. So it's definitely on the border of being too much space for two people, but now that COVID and the world's changed and we spend so much more time at home and as well, we have a business of which a lot of stuff we'll end up storing here, for us, kind of more space is better. So it was just a, a great call all round. Another top tip is for all cabinets and doors, when you're talking about lighting and handles, make sure everything can open fully. I can't tell you how many times we've almost made a decision, like putting a cupboard so close to the wall that by the time you open it, if there's a drawer, you can't actually get it out because the handle means you can't open the door fully. This is like, I feel like this is turning into a bit of an idiot's guide, but when I tell you we have almost messed this up so many times, and on Instagram and people I follow also doing renovations or just, you know, who live in houses, it seems to be a much more common thing than you think. So remember that doors have to open fully, and remember that if there's drawers inside of doors, they need to be able to open all of the way. Another one is painting the front of our house. Again, I will link the painting pebble dash video if you wanted to see, but when we bought our house, it was uh, old and gray and obviously covered in pebble dash. And it was just a very uninspiring home. 
Uh, we did think about getting the pebble dash removed, but at the time it was about 3,500 to 5,000 pounds. And to be honest, it just wasn't money that we had at the time. It's not money that we have now. We had a whole house to renovate and uh, that money was much more effectively spent on the indoors. So we ended up painting the entire of our house for under 100 pounds. It looks completely different. It's still, you know, not the dream exterior of my house. I would like to eventually one day remove the pebble dash, but it's not something that we have the money for right now and it's not a priority as part of the renovation. So a couple of weekends work, 100 pounds of paint, a few friends to help out in exchange for some beers, and we are super, super happy with the results. And I'm aware I've been speaking for a very long time, so I'll keep this one short because God knows I go on about it enough, but uh, buying second hand. And I can talk about buying stuff second hand all day. I love it. I think it's amazing to get a bargain and save money. I think that's brilliant, particularly when you have an entire house to renovate and then decorate and then furnish. All of these things really, really add up. I dread to think how much more money we would have spent so far if we were particular about buying things firsthand. There are, of course, some things that you want firsthand. For me personally, I quite like baths and toilets to be new. Uh, I also want my mattresses to be new and I did want a new kitchen just because the amount of time and effort it would take to upcycle an old one um, or find one that fit our requirements perfectly it would have been a bit of a nightmare. But when I talk this bed, this chest of drawers, all of the chest of drawers in our dressing room, the wardrobes in our dressing room, our sofa, our chairs, our dining room table, our dining room chairs, almost all of the big purchases in this house have been second hand and we've absolutely saved thousands and thousands of pounds which is very important because it's not a time in our lives where we have a lot of cash after doing a renovation and it's more just nice to know that you know you're saving items from either ending up in landfill um, and you're not contributing to the purchase of new items which you know, it's a, it's a nice feeling. I do acknowledge that obviously living in London and having a van, we're kind of in a win-win scenario. We're surrounded by a lot of furniture being sold and we have the means to be able to go and pick up stuff like a sofa. So even if it's just things like decorations, vases, candle holders, a couple of small soft furnishings, I do just encourage you to always look on Facebook Marketplace. That's my absolute number one. But there's also some brilliant deals on eBay as well. So. If it's something you're able to do and you've got the time and the means to spend your weekday evenings running around your town picking up furniture for a much better deal than you would get firsthand, I really encourage you to do that. That's definitely been the biggest money saver so far. And that's it. I cannot apologize enough that the garden isn't done when I promised it would be done, but I hope that you can tell from firstly the changing garden plans and secondly these things that we did right and wrong Sometimes in a renovation, things just don't go to plan. And our timeline has been well and truly messed up. I always think we can do things quicker than we can. And I always forget that there is a spanner around the corner at any moment that's gonna throw your plans into disarray. So I hope these tips will help you not make the mistakes we've already made. And I hope that buys me a little bit of time for a few weeks when the garden is ready to be revealed. Now, because our temporary kitchen is going to be in the garden for a couple of weeks and our carpenter will be installing the kitchen for those couple of weeks, we are shifting to the next room. And so over the next week, we will be laying the floor in the dining room and living room and we will be painting the room. After that, we get cracking on upcycling our fireplace, bringing in all of this furniture that we have actually secretly owned for a few months now, uh, but it's just been living in various locations and it can finally come home. And uh, yeah, basically we're putting the living room and dining room together and I'm super, super excited. So if you would like to follow along and watch those rooms come together, please hit the subscribe button. We upload videos every single Wednesday. Let me know in the comments below if you have done your own renovation and what your biggest mistakes were and your biggest wins. I would love to learn from both. And until then, I will see you next Wednesday. Goodbye.